I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comics and superheroes. And on today's show. We are taking a closer look at the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 799. If Peter Parker is going to overcome his deadliest foe to date, he's going to need to get by with a little help from his friends. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out. So, picking up more or less from where the previous issue left off, Spider-Man had been embarrassed by his newest foe, the Red Goblin. His leg's broken, which means he's not going to be rushing out to the fight anytime soon. Luckily, he can call in some truly amazing friends. Everyone has a job to do, Johnny Storm the Human Torch, is watching over Mary Jane, who, even though she's hanging out in the Iron Man books, you think they would raise a finger to protect her, but hey, Slot's not writing them, not yet anyway. Miles Morales is watching over Aunt May in what easily has to be the most interaction he and Peter have had since this book has started. Funny how it only happens here at the end. And lastly, there's Silk, who's watching over the Daily Bugle crowd. The hope is if they just lay in wait long enough, the Red Goblin will make the first move and they can all bum rush him. Unfortunately, though, the real drama is actually happening elsewhere with Harry Osborne and Liz Allen, who had their two kids kidnapped in the previous issue. They understandably jump to the conclusion that with Norman Osborne back in town, this has to be some sort of kidnapping attempt. Luckily, Liz is the paranoid type and has chipped her kids. Oh, but get ready for a twist. The babysitter wasn't kidnapping the kids for Norman. She was kidnapping them to get them away from Norman and indeed the entire Osborne family drama. For all the good it did her, all of this commotion just ended up leading Norman Osborne right to them. He unveils his new Red Goblin persona to his family, and they're pretty horrified. But wait, there's a twist on top of this twist. That babysitter is no babysitter at all. It's actually Mrs. Lyman. Yeah, that's right. Harry's long-lost, thought-dead mother isn't so lost or dead after all. The Legion of Spider-Folk choose to take this opportunity to catch the Red Goblin in a pincer formation. They're not alone either. It seems that Peter's true ace in the hole was actually Clayton Cole, aka Clash. An original Dan Slott creation who's had an on-again, off-again relationship with supervillainy and who I've actually quite enjoyed despite many people not agreeing with me. His power is sound and what do we know about symbiotes? They can't stand it, right? Only, here's the thing, Red Goblin just isn't packing symbiote power, he's also got the Green Goblin formula in him, which means he has all the powers of a symbiote and none of the weaknesses. Red Goblin proceeds to beat the majority of Spider-Man's friends to damn near death despite them heroically giving it all they got. Flash Thompson, Agent Anti-Venom, ends up joining the fray, and they still make a big point about Peter not being honest with Flash about his secret identity, and really, I don't know why, especially such at a moment like this. But hey, wouldn't you know what? Anti-Venom actually can hurt Red Goblin, and in fact, he was very close to burning away the Carnage symbiote completely when Norman decided to play some head games, saying that he could either go after him or help heal the dying spider friends. Flash's attempt to be the best guy he can be splits his attention, which allows Norman to get the upper hand on him, meaning Agent Venom is also defeated. With no one else left, Spider-Man is forced to join the battle, broken leg and all. But he knows if a whole group of spider people at 100% couldn't beat the Red Goblin, he doesn't have much of a chance. Luckily, Flash, though, chooses to give him a gift from the anti-Venom suit. It's a new black costume, but we're not supposed to know that until the next issue. Red Goblin manages to catch up with the rest of the Osborn fans, Family, he implies that his near brush with death and loss of his powers have given him a new lease on life. He's worried about the Osborn legacy, and because he knows Harry is a constant failure, he decides to give his dark gift to his oldest grandchild, essentially turning him into Red Goblin Jr. as the comic ends. So that was Amazing Spider-Man 799, everybody, and overall I gotta say I actually kind of enjoyed this one. It was pretty damn cool. It was refreshing to get to see Spider-Man sit back, use his brain, and mobilize all of the other members of the Spider-Man family. It's an idea that I feel like Slot should have done a long time ago in his run, but hey, we're getting it here right at the end, so beggars can't be choosers. I've always enjoyed the soap operatics of the Osborne family, so it's cool to see it all take center stage here in this issue, even if I feel like that wasn't Norman's original plan, it is now. Yeah, at the end of the day, I don't actually have very much negative to say about this. In fact, I'm excited at the idea that Dan Slot will end his run on a high note in the next issue. Overall, I'd give this 
an 8 out of 10. It was a fun read. So that was Amazing Spider-Man, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, be sure to take a closer look at some of these other videos I've been working on. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel, so you're always up to date on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you like what I do and are feeling in a supportive mood, please check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.